tonight is Kent Richards, and he's going to be presenting um, a project on the distribution of oil and gas well data through a web-based map application. <laughs> yep, I'm Kenneth Richards. I go by Ken most of the time, but Kenneth is more formal, and so that's why it's on there. Um, I guess I'm not talking. About I don't like microphones, and this one doesn't seem to be working. And there is it. Oh, good. Sweet. I don't like microphones, but either way. Um, so tonight, I will be talking to you about di the distribution of oil and gas well data through a web-based map application. Um, so uh, first off, I'm going to cover a few different things, like what the project is, um, some of the requirements for the projects. Most of those were set forth by the Arizona Geological Survey, and there's one that I set for myself um, if it was possible, and it ended up being possible. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the methodology for this project, which includes the API that I selected, the application review, um, the available data that we had for this project, um, actually reading that data within the application, displaying the data. And that's the majority of this presentation. And then I'll talk to you about the results and some ideas I had for the future of this project. So first thing, um, what is this project? So the Arizona Oil and Gas Conservation Commission, um, which is administered by the Arizona Geological Survey, um, received a grant uh, not too long ago. And this grant was to make all, these, all this data for all these oil and gas wells available to the public. Um, this um, grant was provided to the Arizona Oil and Gas Conservation Commission through the Rocky Mountain Carbon Capture and Sequestration um, Program. And so there's all this different data. And this right here is uh, a well log. This is the main thing that is going to be distributed by this application. Um, and these logs as are uh, recordings of different measurements in the different wells that are drilled throughout the state. Um, and in the state of Arizona, there's about, oh wait, here's a close-up of this so you can kind of get an idea of what they are. Just graphs, and there's all kinds of different logs, and there's lots of them. So within the state of Arizona, there's approximately 1,100 well logs. There might be closer to 1,200 of them. I'm not exactly sure on the number. Um, but there's a lot of them. And each well log has a folder associated with it. And this folder contains the documentation. This includes like permits and any of the legal information that uh, goes along with getting a, a permit to drill a well in the state. And then there's also about 2,400 well logs associated with all these different wells. Um, some only have one type of log, some have like five or six different logs. And all these logs are available as TIFF images. They've all been scanned. We also have the hard copies there at the survey, if anybody's ever interested in going and looking at them. Sometimes they're little short things, and sometimes they're a couple of feet long or three or four feet long. Um, and so we also have 275 LAS files and LAS well logs, and these are an ASCII file that um, are the modern equivalent to these logs. Nowadays, a machine records it digitally, uh, and, and the AZGS part of the grant was to digitize all these, these hand-drawn ones and, uh, into this LAS format, which modern programs can use, and uh, they can use for further exploration. Uh, so some of the requirements for this project that uh, were set forth by the Geologic Survey and the Oil and Gas Conservation Commission was it had to have a simple interface. Um, the original application for delivering this data was text-based and it was really hard and kind of cryptic to use. Uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the commissioner for the project, or for the Conservation Commission, uh, had a hard time even showing me how to go through it. And he had to type it in exactly, and if he didn't type in exactly what how it was saved in the system, you couldn't find it. So it made it really difficult to find anything. But it could be done. You just had to know how to use a system. And so they wanted also to have the interface be map-based so people can kind of get a better idea of where all these different wells are in the state uh, and see how they're related to each other. Well, I was talking to the commissioner today, and he said that he had someone call and ask him about, informa about some information for wells near, his, uh, near her home. And he's like, well, tell you what. And he pointed her to the application, and she could see where all the wells were in, uh, in location to her home. And there wasn't any of them nearby, at least any oil and gas wells. And she thought that was really impressive, and I felt really, really happy about that. But uh, that's getting ahead of myself a little bit. And the other thing they wanted in this application is it needed to display the basic data for the well. And this includes like township section range, the geologic formation at the depth, the depth of the well, 
um, and the different uh, serial numbers that are associated with each well, so the IP or API number and the um, the oh, I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's the, the Arizona's own numbering system for the wells. And then the the other goal of mine went along with this next slide, and it was deciding which API to use. And the API in this sense isn't the same thing as the API number for oil and gas wells. Um, API here is application programming interface, and this is the interface that allows um, part of the interface that allows users to connect to the hardware on the computer and different programs within the computer. So I looked at a few different ones. The first one I looked at was the Flex um, API. Um, this is put out by Esri. And it's a really good API. It's really basic and you can put a, a mapping application together really quickly. And it's really, really handy to have if you don't have much programming experience. But it, it doesn't give you a lot of variety of what you could do, but it does get basic data out there. I also looked at the Silverlight API. Um, this is also another one by Esri. And the Silverlight API is uh, based off of Windows technology. And it's also a really good one, but I, I didn't, didn't quite like it just because it requires an additional plugin for your browser to use it. So you had to download something in order to even view the application. So I looked at uh, two other APIs. The next one was the Leaflet API, and this one's an open source, so anybody can go out there and get it, and they can modify it in any way. And this one's based off of JavaScript, and a large majority of, uh, of web pages and stuff use the JavaScript or use JavaScript now, and it's really popular, and it's really lightweight, and it can be used anywhere. You can use it on your phone, you can use it on your computer, tablet, wherever you are. And, and Leaflet was a really nice one. I really liked that. But it was a little above my abilities because I'm still kind of new to programming. I've done it before, but um, it's a little more than what I could do. So I, I looked at the Esri's JavaScript API. And this one has a little bit more prepackaged. It's still really flexible. You can do lots of stuff with it. It doesn't require any additional plugins to run in your browser. And uh, it's got, like I said, it has pre-built functions to it. So you can kind of throw a few things in there and then customize it really heavily. And so I ended up going with the JavaScript API, which is kind of where I wanted to go. That was my own personal, um, that was my own personal goal for this project was to hopefully use the JavaScript API if it worked out. And it worked out pretty good for this project. Um, for this project, I also needed to kind of go through and see what other people have done with similar projects uh, distributing the same kind of data or similar data. So I first looked at the US Geological Survey's corn cuttings well log map. This one is really nice. It's built on the Esri JavaScript API. And it's, <clears throat> it's got a lot of really neat functionality. And this one dis distributes uh, corn cuttings, which are samples taken from oil and gas logs. Uh, it's uh, got a lot of information on there. It's got townships and ranges, and you can turn things on and off whenever you want um, with the legend. But it didn't quite have the, the method for actually delivering the file. So you could do it, you click on it, but it makes you navigate to another window. And I didn't quite like that. But I did like the basic map interface. It took up the whole screen. It was pretty simple to use. So I looked at the um, Utah oil and gas well log search. And this one's all text based. And I was trying to stay away from as much text as possible. But this is a really good one just for the, the manner the way, in the way that the data is displayed. It's all laid out in this nice grid pattern. You can see all the information they have available. It gives you location information, the files that are available. And it's just really nice, and, but it, it is text-based. And I, it's not very visually pleasing. It, it's kind of overwhelming to start digging through there unless you know you do a really good fine search, a really fine search on this. And then the final application that I looked at and that I used for uh, my application review was the query related resources JavaScript example. And this one comes off the Esri's um, developer page. And this is kind of like a hybrid between the two. It's still dis, uh, delivering oil and gas well data on, on, in a big map that's really simple to use. But it also ha displays all the information in a little grid over here on the side. So you have both your, um, you have that, you can have that data, that well data and the map at the, on the screen at the same time, whereas you couldn't with the, uh, with the corn cuttings application. So I, I thought this was a nice kind of hybrid between the other two applications. So I decided to model the application most heavily after this and taking a few things from the other two. 
and if anybody wants to, you can go and find this on their website, and it's, it's really fun to learn to you if you're just learning JavaScript. Um, so some of the data I used for this project was the wellheads. Uh, it's a wellhead uh, service that the geologic survey maintains. And these are all the oil, gas, water, exploratory wells, you name it. There's like 4,000 of them within the state. And these are, these are the ones that have permit information for or that have been logged with the state. And so there's lots of them, but I only needed the oil and gas wells. So I applied a definition query. Um, which only left me with these 1,100 plus wells uh, for all the oil and gas and data in the state. And as you can see, most of the oil and gas wells are right here and right here, at least all the producing ones. The rest of them, a lot of these are dry holes and don't have any, any aren't producing anymore. Uh, <clears throat> so within this, this uh, data set, there's a field called related resources. And this related resources field um, is set up for another project within the Arizona Geologic Surveys uh, system. This related resources field, uh, it, it's pretty overwhelming, but it's got all these hyperlinks in there and then titles for the hyperlinks. So in order to figure out how to read this information, because all the information I needed for this project was already stored, um, at least the links to the data were already stored inside here. And as you can tell, it's, it's kind of hard to read, but that's why, part of the reason I love computers is because it can, as long as you know what you're doing, you can tell it to look for specific things. And so the first thing I had to do is look for these pipe delimiters. And these pipe delimiters uh, separate the, the, um, the different hyperlinks uh, along with their name. So you'll have, um, let's see, you'll have induction electric log comma and then the hyperlink to it. And then another pipe, sep pipe delimiter to separate that out. And so I programmed the, the application using if statements to go through. And every time it saw one of those, it would cut that, that string, that text field. And then I had to go through and look for commas within each of these. And it would, after it split everything with the pipe delimiters, it would go through again and split everything using these commas. And, these, and then so I'd have um, names and hyperlinks stored in two different spots. Uh, within the application. And then I went through one more time and based on the extension of the file, so in this case, the, these are all .tiffs. Um, there's also .pdf and .las files, or .las on there. But it, depending on which one it found, it would store it in another spot. And so you would have a variable that contained a name and a hyperlink, and then it would, uh, you had a couple of variables that would contain each of those, and then it would divide those amongst the, the different file extensions because all the well logs are in .tiff format, all of the LAS files are in .las format obviously, and all the permit files are .pdfs. And so this made things really, really easy to, to work with. So after it goes through and reads that, um, the data gets displayed. And so what you do in the application is you click, uh, click the select wells button and then you come out and you draw a box around what data you want and then it displays it within this little chart here that appears on the bottom of the screen with all your information, like there's the different serial numbers, the operator, the county that's in, township, range, section, the depth of well, and then here are the hyperlinks that it went through and cut out for all the different data that are available on the servers. And you just click on one of those and it takes you to that file. So this is really good if you're looking for lots of wells um, or one well. And I also wanted to give users another way, so if they just want to browse through the data, they don't necessarily have to select all these wells all at once. And so um, the API has this handy little info window that you can, um, that you can uh, have different data display in. And this, I had it set up so it displays the same data, and including all the hyperlinks. And so this is the exact same stuff that was in the other one, but you can, only, you can look at just one well at a time, so it makes it really easy to just to browse. So I really like that. Um, so actually, I'm going to give you a quick little demonstration here of my application just to show you what I've got. So here it is. It's live on the Arizona Oil and Gas, Oil and Gas Conservation Commission's website. It's under live data if you ever want to go there. Or you can go to the Arizona the Geologic Surveys page and you can navigate through the links to get there. But, so over here you have your instructions for the, the application and a, a legend that updates as you zoom in and out and cursor coordinates, and then you have the select wells feature, uh, our button over here, and you click that, and all your information is displayed on the bottom of the page, and then you can scroll through it. And the screen's a little narrow, so it's kind of compressing the text, but you can still find the information. It's designed for a little bit larger screen, but you can use it. I've used it on my iPad, 
it's kind of fun, but can't really do anything with the data once you get it on an iPad. At least, um, and then you can also click here and, oops. Anyways, that's the application. So you can click on those and then you click on a well folder and it'll open up the PDF and you can download your data. Let's see. So and that's that's the, the application I developed. Now, I've, it took me most of the summer to do and I, I've been tinkering with it here and there ever since then. Um, so for the final results, or sorry, so the future steps I would like to take with this project, because I didn't have time to finish everything I wanted, but these are some things I'd like to do. Is uh, I'd like to add a reset results button to uh, clear everything out so you can start the search again. Maybe add a simple text query, so even if you don't know the area, you can like tell it to zoom to, like give it a county and it'll zoom in on that county. Um, or, and maybe some more zoom functionalities like a, a home zoom button or zoom to selected. And those are some of the things I would like to add to it. And then there's been talk about possibly building a similar application based off of this one for delivering uh, data for mining within the state in, in a similar manner. And I think that's really neat if, they, if that ever gets off the ground. Um, and yeah, these are all the places I looked up. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any of them that I can. Yeah. What part of your project was the most time consuming? Getting that little grid at the bottom of the screen to work. This thing around here, so you can get a better picture. This thing took probably a month, month and a half. It just refused to accept anything. You'd, I'd program it one way and it would work one day and I would change one slight thing and then it wouldn't work. And I, was, I hated that part. I wanted to shoot myself in the foot for most of that part of the project. But I liked it when it came out. Yep.